microscope for the month of April, you'll be amazed. If you just hold an intention and you go, in April, I want to improve my boundaries around my energy. I want to be better at boundarying my energy from those relationships or places that aren't serving my highest good. If you just say that intention, in the speed of transformation right now, you'll be surprised what situations and scenarios will show up and will change in response to that. Astounding. Well, that was something I noticed in your book is that you feel and say, say this. It's not, you know, you, you visualize yourself, you visualize the things that are occurring, but verbalizing is what you suggest strongly doing. I really do. And you know why? I think all of us can be um, intuitive and we can all have a visionary mind, but our mind is also the place where we hear messages from our conscious and our subconscious mind. And so if you write down your intentions, your channeled thoughts, your affirmations, there is something very powerful about bringing those words out of your body and seeing them reflected back to you. So sure, saying things out loud is really powerful, but I highly recommend writing things down. The power of our intention and affirmation is shockingly good, but we don't tend to do it. You know, we'll happily buy a book of affirmations from someone else. And I always encourage people. I know, right? Yeah. And it's, but don't get me wrong. I mean, it's great. I definitely learned how to create my own affirmations through some of the books that I read and okay. through the Z's who would give me affirmations. But right. they always say, create your own. And all we're doing is showing you a universal tool that you can use. So I'm a huge believer in two things, intention and action. And sometimes if you feel inert, if you're deeply depressed, if you're having a challenging life, you maybe can't take action. You know, no part of you feels capable of it, but you can write an intention. And what I'm a big believer in is write an intention. So your intention for, intention for April might be, I want to create a more abundant life. Now, what action steps can you do to back that up? So first of all, acknowledge the abundance you have in your life. Oh, wow, I have a house. I have friends. I have a pet that loves me. I get to see nice nature every day. You know, do a checklist of all the things that you might not see as abundant because you're just living in them, but that to someone else would be an abundant reality. But then also, what can you do to support this intention this month? Is it reading a certain book, watching some videos, going on a course? Is it forcing yourself to buy the 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 meal that's $25 in the restaurant instead of $20 because you catch the part of your mind that goes oh well I don't want to spend $25 I want to spend 20 and you can actually afford to spend five more on the meal but you've got this script running in your mind about the meal so to me intention plus action is a huge way to move our energy but we forget to write these intentions down and when you write it down put it in your environment look at it regularly. It's amazing how much energy it moves. It's been one of the most magical tools for my life, just like I'm a big believer in having a certain book in your presence. You may never read it, but the energy of that book and the energy of that title is in your room. So it's you colluding with the, the universe to say, yep, I want more of this in my life. Brilliant. Absolutely. I am, I believe in setting your environment up. I had to spend three months in one spot, literally <laughs> one spot hmm. for a health reason. I had a, an accident and broke a bone, but that had to have that long, but I couldn't control my environment hmm. and my my space became in disarray worse than normal, right? Because everybody has their things. Yeah. But, and it was just so disheartening. And I, I felt like it was influencing my healing. I was fortunate that I had someone who loved me as my caregiver, but it was still very 
disconcerting. I felt like I was living in chaos while I was trying to heal. Hmm. So I kept books. That was actually within the time frame that I got the manuscript copy of your mm. book. It was so helpful. So helpful. And that's why when I got the the published edition, I was just like, I value both of those so much, right? Because it actually helped me in my, in my reality, it helped me survive that. And it helped me be able to focus on positivity to be able to heal. I'm so glad to hear that. You know, it, 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 it's so true. If, if your outer circumstances are really challenging, then the more you can feed your inner self at those times, that's absolutely the, 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 the best thing you can do. Well, it was because I don't have to be there anymore. <laughs> yeah. Great. <laughs> you know, I, great. I, it was such a blessing to have received your book when I did. And Kim was fantastic with that. And I was not the most communicative that I've ever been at that time, obviously. <laughs> but, of course. But she was just wonderful. Oh, and, fantastic. And the book was too. You know, one of the things that that evolved from that was embracing and preparing for sleep. Hmm. That was some. That still is something I have difficulty with now, because mm. I'm a reader, and I'll have a pile of books, and I'll have my Kindle, I'll have my iPad. I have Kindle on my iPad, mm -hmm. and I have different things going at all times. And with what I do, I feel that I have to be reading constantly, not always just for pleasure, but for research and education about my guests and that type thing too. It's hard to make yourself actually welcome sleep the way that you suggest. But I've been learning. And thank you for that, too. But I wanted to touch on that, if you don't mind. A bit. Sure. Are we at yeah. that point? Did you have something that you wanted to continue uh, yeah. with the other? Well, no, that's perfect. I it's interesting just hearing you. I mean, I think it's funny when there's a there's a chapter in the book um, called Sleep, a Surprising Key to Self-Mastery. And what the Z's really share is that we can use sleep in an intentional way. So they say that sometimes our dreams will help us process things that we either didn't need to process in a human way in the day or that, um, we, that we didn't process. So, for example, you might have a scary nightmare and you wake up and you think, oh, my God, I had a scary nightmare. But you don't realize how much you processing fear in that moment or anxiety helped you. So they say the sleep state, it's a little like dying. They say the only difference between a sleeping person and a corpse is a pulse because <laughs> they say that the soul returns to an elevated state it's you essentially leave your body so I actually with that kept that quote written down <laughs> right right yeah so with that in mind one of the things they greatly suggest and i've used this and it really does help is let's say you had a rough day but you go to bed and you're like oh god today was so tough and intense you can say before you go to sleep, tonight when I sleep, I want to let go of the stress of today and I intend for tomorrow to be an easier, more flowing day. And you literally say that out loud or say it in your mind if you're sharing the bed with someone and you don't want them to hear what you're saying. But you can actually command that over the arc of your sleep, you will let go of what you were dealing with that day and you will refresh the plate ready for tomorrow. Now, on some level, this happens anyway in sleep, but that in the same way that we can ask for angelic help whenever we are feeling stuck or down, it's important to remember to ask for this intention. And you, they call it sleep remedy. So you create your own sleep remedy based on what you feel you need before you go to sleep. And it, you know, takes 20 seconds, but it has a very powerful effect. Well, I've, I just love Wendy in chat said kind of like rebooting your brain back to default settings. And that's exactly mm. 
how you adjusted it was yeah was through a rewiring it just gets you back to your central place of being before you start your next day yeah yeah absolutely the the one thing that i thought was you know it really does resolve bad situations one of our listeners is in chat and sh she said that her situation is unusual, but not really that unusual in today's America. She's caring for an aging parent who mm. is in a difficult phase of life. Mm. So her reality day to day doesn't really alter very much. So when she goes to bed, she knows that she's going to be coping with the same things in the morning. How can she, how can she reset to cope with that, how would what would you suggest is something that she could could help herself with? Well, a couple things. I would say that you know, again, it kind of goes back to what we said earlier. Given she's dealing with difficult outer circumstances, two things: to really feed her inner self and bring herself as much positive energy and inner sustenance during this period of time, because this period of time won't last forever but it is happening right now, but also to see where can she get extra support on the practical plane? What other support is available to her so that this isn't all on her all of the time? Because if she's worn down, it's going to be very hard for her to give care. Now, I get that these kinds of situations are very difficult, but to look at those two things and to see if there are any solutions. Is there somebody who could relieve her an hour a week or an extra hour a week so that she has a bit more space, but equally to make sure that in her downtime, she's really feeding and nurturing her inner self and creating an intention where you write down on a piece of paper, I will get more peace and more help with this situation with my parents. This will no longer be all on my shoulders in the way it is now. I invite this to become true. So something along those lines. So basically manifesting through intention. Both. I mean, basically c committing an intention into your life so that you yourself know that you're working on it and inviting it, but also looking at the situation practically and recognizing you're a pretty powerful creator. So who knows, maybe there is some way that you can have an extra hour or two a week or a couple of times a week and that that might be the level of oxygen that you need to help you deal with what is a difficult situation. I think a lot of the times when we feel overwhelmed, it's hard for us to stand back and try and figure out a way to make the situation less overwhelming. So I think giving it some thought is important too. I agree. With that being said, we have a little two-minute break, and we will be back on the flip side. You are listening to WBHM, digital broadcasting, the best in paranormal talk only on Paranormal Experience Radio. Broadcasting live, live, live out of Birmingham, Alabama. 